Welcome to lesson 14c, Faulkner Scan Wedge Flow Equation. In this lesson, we'll begin a discussion about Faulkner Scan Wedge Flows, and we'll generate a general similarity equation. We won't actually solve the equation until next lesson. By way of introduction, we solved the Blasius flat plate boundary layer, where capital U of X, the outer flow, was constant. It turns out that we can get a general solution, even when U of X is not constant, but only for a certain family of capital U of X, namely when U of X is B X to the M, where B and M are constants. You may recall that we discussed this previously for irrotational flow. We called this 2D wedge flows, where we solve for this geometry, U is a function of X and gamma, the wedge angle. Back in lesson 7D, we solved this problem using potential flow or irrotational flow. Now we'll take that outer flow solution that we derived previously and fit in a boundary layer. We expect a similarity solution since there's no length scale in the problem. This wedge goes on forever to the right, so whether you're an ant looking at just this part or a giant looking at a big part, you'll see the same thing since there's no length scale. Let's set up the similarity equation. Our similarity variables are eta equal y over some characteristic delta delta c, and f prime of eta equal little u over capital U. You may notice that these are identical to those for the Blasius case. We'll also assume that delta c is a function of x and goes like x to the b. And we've already said that u of x is a power law function that we've discussed previously where b and m are not necessarily the same exponent, but c and b here are also constants. Two researchers named Faulkner and Scan were the first to derive this similarity solution, and we now call these Faulkner-Scan wedge flows. Here are our equations in physical variables, continuity, and x-momentum, and note that these equations are for our 2D laminar boundary layer, and we're assuming steady flow. And although these are the same similarity variables as with Blasius, here capital U is a function of x, not a constant. Let's do some algebra using the chain rule, etc., like we did previously. First we calculate del eta del x, and let this y and one of these delta c's be eta. Similarly, del eta del y is just 1 over delta c, since u is capital U times f prime. We differentiate by parts, and using this expression for del eta del x, we get this expression. Del u del y is a lot simpler. It's just u f double prime 1 over delta c. We can differentiate again and get an f triple prime term. Let's examine continuity first. Namely, we'll solve for v, and we'll plug in this expression for del u del x. And we put the functions of x and constants outside the integral. But dy is delta c d eta, since eta is just y over delta c. So v becomes u d delta c dx, and then the integral is just f double prime eta d eta, and the second integral is f prime d eta. We can integrate by parts like we did with the Blasius solution. If you look back at that lesson, this becomes eta f prime minus f, and this is just f. So we rewrite v and group these last two terms together, since these two terms both have f in them. But here's a little trick using reverse product rule. This is d dx of u delta c. And we could set this function of x to 0, since v is 0 everywhere along the wall at y equals 0 for all x. So our final expression for v is u d delta c dx a to f prime minus d dx of u delta c times f. I should mention that letting this function be 0 is also possible by setting the stream function to 0 at the wall. We did a similar thing with the Blasius boundary layer. Now let's plug this v along with our equations for u and its derivatives into the x momentum equation. We get u f prime from u and then our expression for del u del x and then use this expression for v and then del u del y and on the right hand side, the first term stays as is, and the last term is simply nu u over delta c squared f triple prime. All this algebra is making my head spin. 
I won't bore you with all the algebra, but if you multiply this all out, you'll find that this term and this term cancel out. So we get f triple prime plus delta c over nu d dx of u delta c, ff double prime plus delta c squared over nu du dx, 1 minus f prime squared equals 0. And we'll call this equation 1. Let's also call this grouping of terms alpha and this grouping of terms beta. Remember that our goal is for this to be a similarity equation, but for proper similarity, alpha and beta must be functions not of x, but of eta only. But the left-hand side is a function only of x, and the right-hand side is a function only of eta, which is itself a function of x and y. If we change y, we change eta, but nothing changes here. So the only way this works is if alpha is a constant. Similarly for beta, beta must be a constant. So now our job is to find some u and delta c's which satisfy both of these requirements. Well, Faulkner and Scan realized this and tried simple power law functions, namely delta c of x is some constant c x to the b and u of x equal capital B x to the m, where c, b, b, and m are all constants. Now we plug these into our expressions for alpha and beta. So for these power law functions, alpha becomes c x to the b over nu, d dx of b x to the m, c x to the b, and doing a little bit of algebra on that, taking the constants out we get alpha equals c squared b over nu m plus b x to the m plus 2b minus 1. And the 1 comes by differentiating this. And this alpha must be a constant. Well, the only way that happens, since these are all constants, is if this exponent of x is 0, since x to the 0 is 1. Thus, m plus 2b minus 1 must equal 0. Similarly for beta, when we plug in our power functions, and I'll skip some of the algebra, we get c squared b m over nu x to the m plus 2b minus 1, which also must be a constant. We make the same argument about this exponent, so m plus 2b minus 1 must equal 0. Notice that these two match. They're the same. Sir, what would happen if those two equations were not the same? Well, Willie, then we'd have to solve them simultaneously for m and b, and we'd be restricted to one special case. But here we can solve for arbitrary values of m and b, provided they satisfy this one equation. Excellent. Thank you, sir. Once we set these exponents to zero, alpha becomes c squared b over nu m plus b, and beta becomes c squared b over nu times m where remember that c, b, little b, and m are all constants, the only restriction being that m plus 2b minus 1 is 0. Well, Faulkner and Scan chose alpha equal 1, and then our equation 1 becomes f triple prime plus f f double prime plus beta 1 minus f prime squared equals 0. And I'll call this equation 2. This is the Faulkner scan boundary layer similarity equation. And since our wall will always be at 8 equals 0, and the boundary layer extends up to infinity, our boundary conditions are actually the same as those of the Blasius boundary layer, namely f of 0 equals 0, which we already specified when we got rid of that function of x in the equation for v. f prime of 0 equals 0, this is the no slip condition. This first one is analogous to setting stream function equals 0 at the wall, which also forces v to be 0 there. And then f prime of infinity equal 1, which comes from u going to u of x at the edge of the boundary layer out at infinity. And these are also identical to those of the Blasius boundary layer. Forcing alpha equal 1 puts some additional constraints on the problem, and this equation also is a constraint. So let's manipulate the constants a little. From our equation for m and b, b must be 1 minus m over 2. We plug in for b, and setting alpha equal 1, we get 1 equals c squared b over nu, 1 plus m over 2, which we can solve for c. 
but beta is c squared capital B over nu, which we also see here, and there's an m in here. And when we plug in c and do a little bit of algebra, we get beta equal 2m over 1 plus m, or in terms of m as a function of beta, m equal beta over 2 minus beta. And finally, plugging that into this equation for c, we get square root of nu 2 minus beta over b. We already specified alpha as 1, and now we have an expression for beta in terms of m, or vice versa, and our constant c. So in summary, the Faulkner scan similarity equation, which we rewrite here, boils down to one parameter, beta, which we call the Faulkner scan parameter. And this is valid for flows with outer flow u equal bx to the m, and characteristic delta equals cx to the b. And this turns out to be the case for 2D wedge flows, as I sketched previously, where the boundary layer is growing along this wall, and angle gamma determines this exponent m. In the next lesson, we'll look at various values of beta, the Faulkner scan parameter, and solve this equation for a family of Faulkner scan wedge flows of this type. Thank you for watching this video. Please subscribe to my YouTube channel for more videos.